from KTTC, the area's most watched evening news. This is News Center at 6. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. A red flag warning has been up all afternoon. We've been on high alert for grass fires and field fires and for good reason. Volunteer firefighters have been scrambling southeast of Kenyon, west of Glenville, near Dover and Iota, and now near Hammond tonight. That's where we find New Center's Mike Sullivan live, not far from one of the toughest field fires out there this afternoon. Mike? Tom and Robin, fire, fire authorities are not sure what caused the fire, but suspect it may have come from this power line behind me, which is still active. You can actually still hear the electricity flowing through it. Zumbro Falls Fire and Rescue says the fire is contained, but are waiting for an electric company to turn off the power. Zumbro Falls Assistant Fire Chief Bruce Heyman says he saw a four-wheeler come through the area and are not sure if the exhaust could have been the cause of the fire. A red flag warning for outdoor burning is in effect until 7 tonight. These firefighters battle conditions of high winds and low humidity. The same reasons the warning is in place. Well, with the high winds, especially with the dry conditions that we got right now, travels quite fast, hard to get ahead of it. Uh, so, you know, quick response is the main thing and get water going. Heyman says the trees and brush added to the difficulty of putting the fire out. Fire trucks remain at the bottom of the hill, waiting for that power company to come by. Live in Hammond, I'm Mike Sullivan, KTTC News Center. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Well, the wind was whipping those fires. We're going to check in now on uh, the key of what's making that happen tonight. Randy? You know, this is that time of the year. We get that spring transition, strong winds, warmer temperatures, and that's exactly what we have today. In the city, uh, really getting out, it's enjoyable. But yes, fire conditions are bad. Actually, uh, very favorable for fire development uh, through the rest of today. Wind gusts as high as 45 miles per hour today. And now they have backed off a little bit at this hour, but will remain very strong through the rest of this evening. Temperature is coming in at 81 for us currently in Albert Lee, 74 in Rochester. The warmest day of the season so far. It is one to be enjoyed, but of course to be mindful of the fact that it is very dry and that we really need rain. And on that note, some good news into far southwestern Minnesota. Showers and thunderstorms have popped up over there and uh, so far so dry in Rochester, but we're hoping that rain makes it in here by late this evening. That's live from our Lucina siding and windows sky cam and downtown Rochester. Thunderstorms already out there in western Minnesota, likely for us late today. So we'll talk about that shower and thunderstorm chance for us in southeast Minnesota and how things are shaping up and changing toward the end of the week and into Easter weekend in a few minutes. Right. It certainly was a brisk one today. It was, yes. yes. Thank Thanks, you, Randy. Brandon. It is that time of year as well to prepare for weather emergencies. Those tornado sirens sounded this morning in Rochester, but no reason to be alarmed. It was just the first of many tests. Under the emergency management plan, sirens were activated for three minutes at 10 in the morning. Every first, and they will be activated every first and third Wednesday of each month through October 1st. And if you saw a number of squad cars at I.J. Holton School this afternoon, don't worry. Yeah, no big deal. Really, actually, it was a big deal. They were preparing in case of an emergency. It was just simply a drill. News Center's Elena Martella got a sneak peek on the active shooter drill for all emergency personnel in Mower County this afternoon. And she joins us now with more on what happened. Elena? Rob and Tom, I'm here at I.J. Holton Intermediate School in Austin, where this afternoon everyone involved in emergency and law enforcement in Mauer County got together to practice what they would do in an active shooter situation. Fire departments, law enforcement, and paramedics spent their day training at I.J. Holton. Children are not in the building at the time since it's spring break and classes are not in session. The day focused on drills and teamwork and learning to react fast if a shooter was in the building. This type of collaboration training between branches is crucial for the safety of Mauer County. We can better prepare uh, ourselves if this does, heaven forbid, happen in our county. Um, everyone that's involved today is going to know what to do, and this training is designed to help save lives. Sorensen says they do this type of training every couple of years. Today's training is beneficial for any type of situation in which a shooter might be at large in a public venue. Live from IJ, Holton Intermediate School in Austin, Elena Martella. KTTC News Center. All right, thank you, Elena. Well, Rochester police are issuing a crime alert. 47 businesses have been burglarized in the last three months alone. News Center's Kimberly Davis has more on what police are telling business owners tonight. 
Rochester police tell us the number of business burglaries continues to rise, with the latest break-in being just this morning. Police are now suspending the false alarm fee for business burglaries until further notice to try and make an arrest. Police say an employee at Mississippi Welder Supply on the 2700 block of Highway 14 noticed a smashed in window around 530 this morning. We're told three welders were stolen from that business. Back in February, Tom Cadillac Honda was burglarized. Police tell us $240 in cash and $3,000 in tools was taken. In January, an employee of Club 63 on South Broadway noticed more than $1,000 was stolen in a burglary there. Police say many business owners cancel any police response in fear of being charged a false alarm fee. So police are going to suspend that fee for now. They've uh, canceled officers who are responding while they're en route, only uh, later to find out that their business had actually been broken into. And uh, anything that we can do to avoid that and give us a better opportunity to catch uh, the suspect or suspects who are committing these burglaries is, uh, is our goal. Police tell us no specific area of Rochester is being targeted, but believe some of these burglaries are connected. Police believe the rise in business break-ins could be the result of more than one serial burglar. I'm Kimberly Davis, KTTC News Center. Kimberly, thank you. And Rochester police are giving us a closer look at the man who robbed two convenience store clerks at gunpoint. They say a man dressed in all black walked into the Holiday gas station on 37th Street Northwest at about 2.45 on Tuesday morning. The man threatened the two clerks there with a gun, eventually ordering one of them to empty the cash register. Now take a look at the surveillance photos, photos rather that police have provided. The victim is described as very thin, a thin black man in his 20s and approximately six foot four. He was wearing a black hoodie, a black face mask, as you can see, and blue latex gloves. Well, today, police say that he may be wearing Nike Air Force One shoes. You can see all of the photos on our website at KTTC.com. And, of course, if you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. Squad cars surrounded a home in Lewiston earlier this morning after a man with a history of mental illness snuck in with a butcher knife. This all happened around 6 o'clock on the 100 block of West Main Street. Lewiston police say a man in his early 40s trespassed onto that property and approached the resident there with a knife. The man's girlfriend called 911 and authorities from the Winona County Sheriff's Office and the Lewiston Police Department eventually found the intruder in a bed in that home. Due to the intruder's mental illness, the homeowner expressed some remorse for bringing authorities into the situation. I hope he gets the help that he needs. Um, I've had friends like that before and there's hope for him, but I'm glad they found him. I'm glad everyone's safe. Well, there will be no criminal charges filed in this case, and the man with mental illness was taken to St. Mary's Hospital for evaluation. Winnesheet County has a new sheriff. The Winnesheet County Board of Supervisors has named Deputy Dan Marks as the new sheriff there. And the former sheriff, G, uh, Lee Bohr, announced his retirement in December. Well, yesterday was his last day in office. The new sheriff, Marks, has worked in law enforcement for the past 18 years and has been a deputy with Winnesheet County since 2002. He says that his primary goal for his time in office is to provide honesty, friendly, and fair law enforcement service in the county. He plans to focus on the protection of children and victims of domestic abuse, as well as crack down on methamphetamine in the area. Mark says that he would like to thank the citizens there, and he expects the transition to be a smooth and seamless one. Well, an update to a story that we first brought you over the weekend. All of the merchandise stolen from the return of the Robin Hockey Tourney has now been given back. As much as $3,000 worth of merchandise was reported stolen late Saturday night as the tournament concluded at Graham Arena. Among items missing were three raffle prizes, including a year's supply of Red Bull energy drink. So we are happy to report that all of the stolen Red Bull merchandise has now been returned. Maybe it just showed up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, no anyway. questions. That's all right, as long as it's back. <laughs> well, the final four for the NCAA men's college basketball tournament may have just secured their spot, but a Winona company has been planning for the tournament for many, many months. Wincraft is busy making NCAA merchandise and has been doing this every year for the NCAA tournaments now for 40 years. Thousands of pennants, pins, decals, and ticket holders are being manufactured in time for this weekend's big games as teams advance from the Sweet 16 to the Elite 8 and have now course the Final Four. Wincraft starts working on putting together its line of products for each team.
We don't really manufacture anything until there's a winner. Yeah. It's just been a style of Wincraft. The way we go to the market is we usually have enough manufacturing time to manufacture and ship the next day. Wincraft has customers all over the country, but their top two markets, get this, Wisconsin and Kentucky, who unfortunately for the company play each other for one of the spots in the championship game this weekend. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> still, I, something tells me they're still yeah, going to be okay. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> well, still ahead, a student at a Chatfield Elementary School is in the battle for his life. But he is not fighting alone. His classmates declared war to help him fight disease, and they're doing it in a very special way. We'll have the story coming up. You're watching the KTTC News Center with Tom Overly, Robin Wolfram, Chief Meteorologist Randy Brock, and Sports with Pat Lund. This is KTTC News Center at 6. When it comes to money, we know pennies don't usually make a large impact when buying things or making a big donation. However, local elementary students have found a way to put those pennies together for a very good cause. News Center's Taj Simmons is live in the newsroom to tell us all about it tonight. Taj. Well, Tom and Robin, we do a lot of things with pennies, usually not for money. We usually we throw them in fountains for good luck, or we get them lost in our couch cushions half the time. But for students in Chatfield, they've used pennies to give back to a fellow student, and the results have been nothing short of amazing. Those who say pennies are worthless have not made a trip to Chatfield Elementary School recently. During the past week, students at the school have competed in penny wars to see who could donate the most cash. However, this is not just a way to unload spare change. They're doing it to support Caleb Ide, a first grader at the school, currently fighting cancer. We've collected money in the past for different things, and the kids really got on board with this idea, and it's just spun into what it is today. The outpouring of support for Caleb has resulted in nearly $6,000 in donations raised since the last week of March. Caleb's friends and classmates have counted the avalanche of copper, and they don't mind doing the work as long as it helps Caleb out. Kind of like helping him for doing stuff for him, and we can help him. Just imagine what his bills are right now, like really way up there because of all the surgery and stuff that he had done, and like this can help pay the bills and stuff. And as for the teacher who arranged it all, even she's amazed by just how fast their fundraising efforts took off. Well, we were excited just on day one to get $200, um, so every day has increased and just huge amounts of money collected every single day has been truly inspirational. So while there are many pennies still hidden in couch cushions and fountains, the students of Chatfield proved the penny can make a difference in someone's life. And just a small note, there was so much change there to count today that the kids couldn't even finish counting before the bell rang. But the teacher estimates that the students raised, get this, nearly $2,000 today alone. Live in the newsroom, Taj Simmons, KTTC News Center. Wow, that is so great to see. Certainly wish him well, mm -hmm. too, all that support. Well, the Austin Bruins are busy prepping for opening playoff weekend. Pat will have more on that later in sports. Plus, Easter isn't the only holiday being celebrated this weekend. Later, we sit down with a local rabbi who is busy preparing for Passover. And today's warmth sure feels good, but that wind is making for dangerously dry conditions. We'll talk about that and the chance that we could actually see some rain move through late this evening. Your forecast is up next. Well, this is definitely something I would consider good news for weekend. Yes. Thank you, Thanks, Randy. Randy. Well, Pat has a check on sports when we return. It is back to work for Mike Yo and the Minnesota Wild after some time off. We'll be right back. Let's hope the Wild got a little bit of rest because if the Timberwolves passed on this kid move, in the draft. Left. Typical. Wolves play tonight. We'll see you back here at 10. Minnesota Energy is issuing a firm warning that if you are not paying your natural gas utility bill, you could be disconnected. Minnesota Energy Resources says a significant number of customers throughout the state owe four or more months of payments. They face the greatest risk of having their service interrupted. 
Company officials say customers who have made an attempt to pay during the winter time or have worked out a payment arrangement should not be concerned. Last year, Minnesota Energy disconnected service to about 8,000 customers who failed to make a payment. Coming up this weekend, we are not only celebrating Easter, but also the eight-day festival of Passover, and preparations are underway already in Rochester. The Shabbat of Rochester is hosting community Passover Seder dinners this Friday and Saturday. The holiday begins at sundown on Friday and ends at sundown Saturday, April 11th. The festival commemorates the exodus of the Jews from Egypt by both celebrating royalty of freedom and remembering the bitterness of slavery. Rabbi Green walked us through some of the food symbolizing those uh, aspects, but tells us the ritual is also reminding us of a personal liberation. The beginning of the, of the Seder, before the meal starts already, we're breaking off a piece, saving it for later. Because here, so here you have a celebration, the fact that, it, the, that the Jews left Egypt so quickly. So that's a celebratory thing, but it's still recounting a, a, an aspect of this is a bread of humility. The Chabad is opening its doors to those celebrating Passover on Friday and Saturday, and you can find more information on our website at ktTC.com. In 10 or 15 years, we may see an opera star or two emerge from our region thanks to something happening in our schools right now. Hayfield Elementary are getting in touch the kids there with their inner opera singers over the next week. The Minnesota Opera is partnering with Hayfield Elementary to teach kids about opera performance using some of Mozart's greatest music. The students are learning about about the culture of opera and they're getting out of their comfort zones. I think playing songs like and singing songs in different languages would just have to be my favorite because it's like a new learning experience for me. We're going to keep our eye on Macy there. Mm -hmm. The partnership will conclude April 9th when Hayfield Elementary will put on an evening concert along with soloists from the Minnesota Opera. Should be kind of fun to attend. Mm -hmm. Well, today is April Fool's Day, as we all know, the day where it's okay to play some harmless pranks. Harmless Yes, pranks. nice to emphasize that. Earlier, we asked you on our Facebook page, what was your best clean April Fool's prank? And Christine Brand tells us that she told her kids school was two hours delayed. Well, after a mini celebration, she broke the news that it was really a joke, April Fool's. So we want to know what your best harmless prank is by going to facebook.com slash KTTC TV. And uh, we also want to know, do you plan on doing any tricks for April Fool's Day? Again, go to our website, KTTC.com. I think that mom is maybe a little mean for playing that trick on her kids. Has anybody played any tricks on you yet today? Never. No? They don't dare. <laughs> Whatever. You don't, do you dare? Okay. What, do I dare? Yes. Oh, I'll dare. <laughs> <laughs> the new Center at 6 will be right back. And as we head to break, we're going to look at some of the top stories being read on our website. We'll be right back. Well, a Bloomington boy noticed several unwanted bunnies on Craigslist after Easter last year, and he saw a business opportunity. A smart kid. Caleb Smith operates a business where they foster rabbits out of kids. Out to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, two kids for up to eight weeks. <laughs> yeah, the first one would not be a good idea. The idea stemmed from <laughs> when he and his mom went on Craigslist and they saw 350 rabbits posted to give away. Seems families Aww. like this idea of bunnies <laughs> rather than the reality of life with it. So this little mogul found a solution. We want families to not buy a rabbit, but to foster a rabbit first with us. We can foster rabbits out to kids <laughs> for up to up to eight weeks so they raise the rabbits they have 90 total 36 are fostered out right now great idea that is a thanks great for watching idea. everybody go grab your bunny uniforms oh. costumes we'll see you <laughs> good night good night